Hi everyone. In today's lesson, we're going to be taking a look at how to solve two variable first degree inequalities. So in your notebook, please put today's subtitle, which is Solving Two Variable First Degree Inequalities. Solving two variable first degree inequalities presents a huge complication versus only one variable inequalities. To take a look at what this complication is, let's look at an example. Suppose I asked you to solve the inequality 2x plus 3y minus 6 smaller than or equal to 0. Well, if you think about it for a moment, you might realize the complication involved when you're dealing with two variables. The complication is that there can be potentially billions, billions of combinations of x and y that will cause this statement to be true. So the big question is how do we provide a conclusion that will give us all possible combinations of x and y? Well the answer to this lies in a three-step procedure. The first step is the following. We have to draw a line that represents the expression if it was just a normal equality. So in this example, we want to draw the line that represents if it was 2x plus 3y minus 6 equal to 0. In other words, we want to find all the combinations of x and y that will cause the expression to exactly equal to 0. This line can be drawn in one of two ways. The line will have to be a dotted line if it was strictly an inequality and the line will be solid if there is an equality involved. But then, the next question is how do we find the possible combinations of x and y that actually solve not just the equality but the inequality? So in this example, what possible combinations of x and y will make the expression smaller than zero? and not just equal to zero. Well, the second step will help us figure that out. The second step involves simply testing the point zero zero to verify if it makes the statement true or false, or in the case where zero zero is directly on the line that we drew in the first step of the procedure, we can simply test any other random point on the Cartesian plane. If the point that you choose to test makes the whole statement true, then any other point that is located in the same region as your test point will also make the statement true. And that leads us to our third step, which is shading the appropriate region. If it turns out that your test point creates a false statement, then the appropriate region to be shaded will be the region that does not contain that test point. Now despite only being three steps, this procedure might sound complicated at the moment, but rest assured that once you do a couple of examples, it will go very, very fast. So let's continue with the example that we started with, the expression 2x plus 3y minus 6 has to be smaller than or equal to 0. So the first step in our procedure is to draw the line corresponding to the expression if it was just a normal equality. So for this example, we want to draw the line corresponding to the expression 2x plus 3y minus 6 equal to 0. Let's disregard the smaller than for now. There are a couple of ways to draw the line corresponding to this expression and you're certainly free to use whichever method you want to draw this line. I believe that the easiest method to draw this line is to simply plug in some random x values to get your y value or plug in some random y values to get some x values because to, in order to draw a straight line all you really need is to get yourself two points. Another way to draw the line is to convert to functional form by isolating the y 
and then simply drawing a line, perhaps using the rise over run method. I'm personally going to stick with simply plugging in some random x values and or some random y values. So, let's begin. I'm going to plug in completely randomly when x equals to 0. So, when x equals to 0, substituting it in, in our expression gives us 2 times 0 plus 3y minus 6 equals to 0. 3y minus 6 is equal to 0. 3y is equal to 6, therefore y is equal to 2. So, this gives us one point. When x is 0, y is 2. But remember, to draw a straight line, we need two points. So, let's try plugging something else in. Um, how about completely randomly, this time I plug something into the y. So, how about when y equals to 0? Let's see what x is going to be. So, substituting y equal to 0 into our expression gives us 2x plus 3 multiplied by 0 minus 6 equals to 0. Simplifying, that will give us 2x minus 6 equals to 0. Therefore, 2x has to equal to 6, so x is equal to 3. And there we go. That gives us a second point located at 3 and 0. So with these two points, that's all we really need to draw the straight line. In preparation to draw our line using the two points that we just found, you'll need to prepare a grid that's about this size. So go ahead, pause the video, and prepare your grid now. With your grid ready to go, let's put down our two random coordinates. The first one was located at coordinate 0 and 2. So that puts it right about there. And the second coordinate was located at 3 and 0. So that puts it right about there. Now, the big decision is, should it be a solid line or a dotted line? Well, if you go back to our original expression, it was 2x plus 3y minus 6 has to be smaller than or equal to 0. The fact that it could equal to 0 makes it a solid line. So, if you draw it properly, your line should look like the following. And that takes care of the first step in our procedure. This line represents all possible combinations of x and y that will cause our expression to equal to 0. But then the big question is, how do we account for all other combinations of x and y that will cause our expression to be less than 0? Now our second step comes into play. The second step involves testing any random point on the Cartesian plane usually 0, 0 is the most convenient point to test, or in the case where 0, 0 is directly on the line, we can simply test any other random point from the Cartesian plane. In this particular example, the point 0, 0 does not lie directly on the line. Therefore, it makes the point 0, 0 a very convenient test point. So, when you show your test, I would like you to actually make a statement about which point you are choosing to test. So testing 0, 0. So let's see if testing 0, 0 creates a true or false statement in our original expression. So our original expression was 2x plus 3y minus 6 should be smaller than or equal to 0. So let's plug 0 into the x and 0 into the y, or whatever you chose as your test point. So using 0, 0 will give us 2 multiplied by 0 plus 3 multiplied by 0 minus 6. Will it actually be smaller than or equal to 0? So simplifying, that gives us negative 6 smaller than or equal to 0. And ask yourself, is this a true or a false statement? It turns out that negative 6 is in fact smaller than 0. So this statement is true. 
This means that any other point that is located in the same region of the Cartesian plane as your test point will also cause the expression to be true. And this finally leads us to the final step in our procedure, which is to simply shade in the appropriate region. In this particular example, it will be the region that contains our test point because our test point created a true statement. So going back to our graph, it results in this region being shaded. And there it is. That is our solution, which would cause our two variable first degree inequality to be true. Any point located in that shaded region will make our expression true. So it's kind of funny that um, the solution is not really stated with any kind of mathematical notation. Our solution is simply that shaded region. All right, let's try another example, but let's try to go a little bit faster. And you'll see that with practice, this type of inequality can be solved very quickly. For the next example, please put down the following. Solve the inequality minus 3x plus 5y minus 15 has to be bigger than 0. Well, the first step in our procedure involves drawing the line that corresponds to this expression if it was just a normal equality. So we want to draw the line that corresponds to the expression negative 3x plus 5y minus 15 equal to 0. I remind you that you may draw the line any way you want. My preferred method is to simply plug in some random x's and or some random y's. So let's begin. How about completely random, I try plugging in x equal to 0. So that will give me negative 3 times 0 plus 5y minus 15 equal to 0. Simplifying gives me 5y equals to 15, therefore y is equal to 3. So I have one point located at 0 and 3. But to draw a line, I need two points. So let's try plugging in something else. How about completely at random, I plug in when y equals to 0. Let's see what x is. So that will give me negative 3x plus 5 multiplied by 0 minus 15 equal to 0. Simplifying, that gives us negative 3x is equal to 15. Therefore, x equals to negative 5. There we go. That gives us the second point located at negative 5 and 0. As you can see, this step goes extremely fast, especially if you show your work simply using a calculator. Next, to comfortably accommodate our two completely random points, you will need a grid that's about this size. So go ahead, pause the video, and prepare your grid. All right, with your grid ready to go, let's put down these two random points that we have. The first one is located at 0 and 3, so that puts it right about there. The second one is located at negative 5 and 0. So that puts that point at about there. Now the big decision. Will this be a solid line or a dotted line? Well, if you look back to the original expression, you'll notice that there is no equality in the expression at all. It's simply negative 3x plus 5y minus 15 bigger than 0. So in this case, it's going to be a dotted line. So, if you draw properly, your dotted line should look like the following. And that's good enough for me. And the final step in our procedure is to pick a test point completely random from the Cartesian plane and see which region is the appropriate one to shade. Now again, notice that 0, 0 does not lie directly on the line. That makes 0, 0 a very good and convenient test point. As usual, please, no matter which point you pick, tell me which one you're testing. 
simply writing test and then the point that you're testing is good enough for me so I'm testing 0 0 so let's see what happens in my original expression I get negative 3 multiplied by 0 plus 5 multiplied by 0 minus 15 is it actually going to be bigger than 0 simplifying we get that negative 15 is bigger than 0 and this as you can see is a false statement therefore the appropriate region to be shaded will be the region that does not contain our test point so going back to our graph it will be this region and that's our solution to the inequality any point located in that shaded region will cause the expression to be true and that's all there is ladies and gentlemen to solving two variable first degree inequalities